Um, final thoughts, review, coach's checklist. I just put that in there because that was one of my favorite nights ever. I got to meet and hang out with Manny Pacquiao, the Pac-Man. Unreal. Um, coach behavior. You got to bring energy. Again, you, you might have a little checklist and give yourself a report card after every workout, every practice. Bring humor. Bring charisma. Teach with organization and clarity. Everything's got to flow. Uh, for the most part, it has to be progressional. Give feedback and praise. Teach life and hoops. Right? Don't ever forget, you got two jobs. Te teach life and hoops. Here are the non-negotiables for players. Energy and enthusiasm. They got to compete. In my workouts, I'm teaching them to compete, to work hard, talk and touch, positive body language. I'm, right? I'm getting, getting on them. If, if they don't, workout standards, your drills got to be safe. They got to be fun. They got to be game-like. They have to work hard. And competition and teamwork are addressed. There's got to be a buildup. If you do one-on-o, -on say 20 minutes, then go right after and go one-on-one. -on -one. But you, you, you can't just go one-on-o -on -one the whole workout. There's got to be, all right, we rep the uh, driving against the defense. Now let's play one-on-one -on -one off the bounce. Hey, we repped wide pin downs, which is wide down screens, right? Now let's go two on two. But this, I mean, these are these are just standard. If you work out, like that's what you're trying to do. Final physical thoughts. Uh, again, I got a master's in kinesiology, and uh, this is one of the things I took away. It takes about 10,000 tries to learn something, right? About a million times for it to become instinctive, meaning – you can do it against pressure or anxiety. And then it takes about um, 10 years of annual practice to really excel in anything and be a master. And that was based on a Nobel Prize winner, uh, Herbert Simon. Coach, I have a um, question. Sorry to stop you. Yeah, no, sure. In your 30 years of experience, what have you noticed about the learning tendencies of modern kids and how have you adjusted? Uh, well, uh, over the years, I've had to really slow down and, and be more patient. Um, you know, to me, it's, to me, starting this 25 years ago as a college coach and now, decision-making is, is, is at an all-time high. Back when I started, decision-making was bad, but it wasn't as bad as now. Because I think with the, you know, technology and uh, social media presence, kids work more by themselves. If, if they have a tendency to work, they do more one-on-one, -on maybe one-on-one, -on -one, get a highlight mixtape, go one-on-one -on -one in the game, right? Get a lot of likes and followers and not understand what it means to take a good shot, share the ball, get rid of it, cut move without it and so i've had to adapt the decision making piece more and emphasize it more and slow down make sure i teach it the right way when i go you know one-on-one -on -one, uh, I'm, I'm teaching the kids decision making to get separation and then i've added if you're not you know when you separate instead of shooting pass it and cut uh, i've done a lot of a lot more two on two uh, two on O oh, when I have four players in a group workout instead of just individual fundamentals. We get the individual fundamentals in, but I've really been um, uh, intentional about that decision making piece. Uh, great question. Um, and again, I, I, I'll, I'll go over nine. I mean, I know we're supposed to finish at nine, but I, I can go over. I don't mind. Uh, or we can finished so because I got uh, um, I got time but as a coach you know mentally you got to learn how to deal with confrontation and in my experience and I've had to work on this you know it's not how you coach a player it's how you respond like what are you going to do when a player does it wrong or disrespects you or there's anger or chaos or confusion or uh, ignorance and I always say there is no solution without real confrontation as a coach and a player, you can't fear failure. 
you can't be uncomfortable with the unknown. Well, what's going to happen? I don't know, man. Let's just figure it out. But you can't. So how do you gain a player's trust and buy-in? And that's me and Kevin Durant. Uh, I've had a chance to work him out tons of times. And it's always been successful because I work hard for them. All right? I'm sweating with them. I'm, I'm, I'm working hard. I'm running after balls. I'm sprinting. Like, I got my lather of sweat the whole workout. I have a passion for them. Like, they're the most important thing in the world in my enthusiasm. High five. Yeah! Nice shot. Woo! I like that. There you go. I love the game, and, and you can just tell it's not fake. But you know what? I'm not their buddy. I'm not hanging out with Kevin Durant at the club. I'm not asking for autographs. I'm not asking for um, – I might get a picture, but I'm not asking for too many things. I'm their coach and not their buddy. So I'm trying to educate them. I'm trying to teach them. I'm trying to uh, impart something that they don't know. I'm trying to get them to remember a life concept and a ball concept. I have fun with them. I relate to them, right? I have empathy for them. I got to meet them where they're at. And, Jerry, you just asked the difference between training 20 years ago and now. Like today's generation, right, you got to meet them where they're at. They're dealing with a lot more issues, a lot more transparency, uh, you know, because of resources out there. Um, good and bad, you know, they're, 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 they're able to, to open up about more, you know, dark stuff. So if you, I wrote, I wrote this down. If you lead from your generation, you lead from the dead, right? Every NBA team, WNBA team has hired a sports psychologist. Cause that means these, these coaches, these, these kids are struggling with real stuff. And so as a coach, you got to work on your connection. You got to work on their their trust. I mean, look at John Beeline, one of the smartest coaches I've ever been around. Got to hang out with him for a year. My brother played for him in Richmond for two. One of the most genius coaches I've ever been around gets fired from the Cavs. Why? Because there was no trust. I don't know whose fault it was, but there's got to be a buy-in. And those are some of the things that, that I do.